Did the Germans have nuclear technology in World War II? The answer is yes. Did they have an atomic bomb? Here the answer is less clear. We might only say almost. It was a sufficiently frightening possibility for the Allies that a special mission was launched near the end of the war to capture both scientists and technology before a bomb came online. The results of that operation would reveal that Nazi Germany was very close indeed to possessing atomic power, and the ability to weaponize that power in some form or other must surely have followed. Germany had led the world in research into nuclear fission. In 1938, two Germans had discovered nuclear fission, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann. In 1939, physical chemist Paul Hartek had alerted the German government to the military application of nuclear chain reactions. A large number of physicists formed the so-called Uranium Club in the lead-up to the war. The Army Ordnance Office began the formal German nuclear weapons project involving many of Germany's top scientists, including Werner Heisenberg, probably the outstanding physicist of his generation. Fortunately for the Allies, Hitler and other senior Nazis had little interest in the program, favoring conventional weapons to win the war, and progress was very slow in comparison to the British and then the joint UK-US Manhattan Project, and starved of resources. But the Manhattan Project raced along, fearful that the Germans would beat the Allies to creating the bomb. The German project was split into four areas, production of uranium, and heavy water, uranium isotope separation, and building a small nuclear reactor called the Uran Machina, or uranium machine. Things moved along slowly. Heavy water, vital to moderate the energy released in chain reactions, was produced in German-occupied Norway. Joint British-Norwegian commando attacks severely limited this supply. The Germans didn't realize that graphite rods would do the job of moderator equally well as adopted by the Allied program. Regardless of Germany's slow atomic development, the Allies remained nervous. In September 1943, the Alsace mission was created, a joint British-American unit of scientists in uniform, a sort of atomic monuments men, whose task was to find evidence of the Nazi program before the Soviet Union did. Hitler talked constantly of amazing new vengeance weapons, the V-weapons, and coupled with the knowledge of highly talented physicists and chemists working on atomic research in Germany, reports of German atomic activities were taken very seriously in the White House and in 10 Downing Street. The Alsos mission was commanded by Colonel Boris Pasch, a U.S. Army intelligence officer, and included several notable American and British scientists and spies in uniform. Lieutenant Commander Eric Welsh, head of MI6's Norwegian section, a British chemist and spy. Michael Perrin, head of Tube Alloys, the British front company for British nuclear weapons research. Samuel Goudsmit, a Dutch-American physicist. Colonel John Lansdale, formerly in charge of intelligence and security at the Manhattan Project, and RAF Air Commodore Sir Charles Hambro, a Danish-British banker and spy. In total, Alsos had seven professional military officers and 33 scientists in uniform in the beginning. Following the invasion of Normandy, Alsos moved to try and capture important French physicist Frédéric Joliot Curie, son-in-law of Madame Curie. Lieutenant Colonel Pache and his small unit advanced into Paris with the French 2nd Armoured Division, searching for Joliot Curie. They were forced to fight through the streets against sporadic German resistance, capturing Joliot Curie in his office on the 25th of August 1944. He was extensively questioned about the activities of German scientists who had visited Joliot Curie's laboratory and conducted nuclear experiments there. When the British 21st Army Group liberated Brussels, the Alsos team was close behind, escorted into the city by Royal Air Force armed vehicles. On the 7th of September, Alsos captured the office of Union Minière du Haute Katanga, the world's largest supplier of uranium ore from the Belgian Congo. They discovered that a thousand tons of refined uranium had been sent to Germany. Alsos also captured 68 tons still in Belgium. 
All information gathered pointed to the city of Strasbourg as a focus of German atomic activity. Alsace shifted to the U.S. 6th Army Group area and discovered a German nuclear laboratory at Strasbourg Hospital. Some scientists were captured, but the big names managed to stay one step ahead of Pasch and Alsace. Documents discovered at Strasbourg confirmed that the Germans had been unable to develop a practical process for uranium enrichment necessary for atomic weapons. It looked as though the Germans wouldn't have a functioning bomb, but perhaps they could produce some kind of dirty bomb instead. The last German offensive in the West, Operation Nordwind, now threatened Strasbourg. Pasch ordered all captured documents destroyed before pulling out on the 8th of January 1945. A new headquarters was established at the German city of Aachen. In March, the U.S. 12th Army Group launched Operation Lumberjack to clear German forces from west of the River Rhine. The Alsace mission entered Cologne on the 7th of March, but little information was found. Interrogation of German prisoners revealed that uranium and thorium were being processed in Germany at a plant in Oranienburg. This was in the line of advance of the Red Army. Pasha's superiors arranged for a massive air raid on the plant on the 15th of March 1945, when 612 B-17s flattened the place, denying its use to the Soviets. By the 30th of March, Alsace had reached the university city of Heidelberg. Several important scientists were captured. They revealed that the German atomic weapons program had relocated to several small towns. Otto Hahn had a laboratory at Tailfingen, Werner Heisenberg was in a laboratory at Heckingen, and perhaps most alarmingly, Heisenberg's uranium pile, a small nuclear reactor, was hidden at Heigerloch. As Alsace continued to advance into western Germany, it uncovered nuclear reactor components, eight tons of uranium oxide and various scientists. The problem now was that the Alsace's main targets, the uranium pile and Heisenberg's and Hahn's laboratories, lay in the path of the advancing French First Army. The US-UK force was determined that the French would not capture Germany's atomic secrets. An attempt was made to redraw the advancing army's boundaries to ensure that American troops got there first, but this failed. In the meantime, the U.S. 83rd Infantry Division captured the town of Stasfurt on the 15th of April, revealing 1,000 tons of uranium ore. Colonel Pasch quickly organized its evacuation over 10 laborious days involving 260 truckloads. It was rushed out as Stasfurt was to be in the post-war Soviet zone of occupation. Pasch's men got this valuable material to England by plane and ship, denying once again the Soviets any advantage. On the 20th of April 1945, Hitler's last birthday, the French established a bridgehead across the Neckar River. It was now only a short advance from there to Heigerloch, Tailfingen and Heckingen. Alsace had to move fast, or the French would gather up all the scientists and all of the technology. A scratch force was put together to go behind enemy lines and beat the French to the prizes. The scientists would now be acting just like regular troops. Pasha's force had two M8 armoured cars, four jeeps armed with machine guns, including two mounting captured German MG42s and three unarmed jeeps. Accompanying them was a single US combat engineer battalion, and Brigadier General Eugene L. Harrison, the 6th Army Group's G2 intelligence chief. This joint US-British Alsos force reached Heigerloch on the 22nd of April without opposition. In a cellar beneath the church, the team discovered a German experimental nuclear reactor, but its uranium and heavy water were missing. Pasch left Sir Charles Hambro in charge of dismantling the reactor, while he charged on to Heckingen, capturing 25 top scientists there. At Tailfingen, the Alsos team captured Otto Hahn and nine of his staff. In the meantime, at Heigerloch, the team found a sealed drum of secret documents in a cesspool and then three drums of heavy water and one and a half tons of uranium ingots buried in a field. Heisenberg was still on the loose, however. On the 1st of May, Pasch, with ten men, in two armoured cars and two jeeps, set off to capture him. On the 2nd of May, 1945, Werner Heisenberg was finally collared at his home in Urfeld. 
the Alsos team exchanging fire with German forces during the mission. The Alsos mission had been completely successful. The Allies were surprised. After all the hype and fear, the little atomic reactor in the cellar had not worked and could never have made a bomb. But the captured uranium, the documents and the scientists were worth their weight in gold for the Manhattan Project and for the future Cold War. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.